All right, how much do I need to retire at 60? Or said another way, how much in retirement investing accounts do I need to retire at 60 years old. So we're gonna get into the detailed EKG today. We're gonna to look at how much do we need in savings to retire at 60 based on inflation, based on taxes, based on any kind of extra money we wanna spend, maybe for travel, a child's wedding, anything. We're also gonna look at historical stock market returns as well as a geometric 4% and 6% rate of return. And we're gonna look at social security. So let's get right into it today. So we've got Drew Blackston, that's me, and we wanna retire at 60 years old. We're trying to figure out how much in retirement assets we need to retire at 60. So we're retired. Now, as you can see, we've got to fill in some things. So we're going to go through this together detailed so you can see the process for finding out exactly how much you need save for retirement. So you can retire at any age. So if you're trying to retire at 55, retire at 50, retire at 62, this is the same process that we go through for all of our clients to determine have you saved enough for retirement. So the first thing we're going to look at is Social Security. So Drew's primary benefit, we're going to look at 67 years old and his Social Security at full retirement age for this video is $2,800. Now, if he took it at 62, he would get 70% of his full retirement benefit. If he waited to 70, he would get 124% of his full retirement benefit. So we're going to look at 67 right there in the middle, getting 100% of his full retirement benefit. Now, from an asset standpoint, we don't have any assets yet. Because remember, we're trying to figure out the exact penny, how much we need to retire. So we've got to have a couple factors filled in first before we can get that asset number. The first one is, when are we going to take Social Security and how much that's going to be? The second factor we've got to look at is our rate of return. What kind of interest what kind of rate of return are we going to get on our stock market investments, on our retirement investing accounts? Well, let's assume a 6% rate of return. I've already got that plugged in. So we're going to assume a 6% rate of return on our investments. Now, from an expense standpoint, $50,000 is our annual expenses. So if we break that down monthly, it's $4,166 a month. Now, that's getting an average inflation rate of 3.24%. Now, what I love about the software is it calculates inflation on a monthly basis. So that $4,166 is gonna get inflated for the next month. So you're gonna have 12 months of inflation on those expenses. It's a 3.24% annual inflation broken down monthly. Now, inflation history, from 1914 to 2021, the 108-year average is 3.24. That's why we're going to use that. Now, we could be in a scenario where we have a 1960s to 1970s and 80s type inflation, but we don't know. So what we have to do is just work off of our historical averages, which is 3.24%. Now, what's wonderful about the software is you can plug in whatever you want. You can put five, six, seven, whatever you want to look at. Now, from a cash flow standpoint, this is where we add in vacations, purchases of cars, maybe a second home purchase, any kind of big expenditures that you're going to have in your retirement. Those can be one-time expenditures. They can be a decade of travel. It can be monthly expenditures, maybe added health insurance or whatever. We can add that into the cash flow. So we're going to wait on that for just a second. So let's go to retirement and let's look at how much do we need in retirement savings? Well, the current value says that we need $922,799 to retire at 60. Now remember when we did it on the board, we came up with $756,000. I said that was the least amount that you needed to retire at 60. Now, that's on the board. That's not taking into account 
all the different factors that the software is doing, which is why it's so important for you. When you're doing retirement income planning, when you're doing can I retire planning, you need to factor in everything on the outside. Whether you do that with me and we do an EKG or you're doing that with Fidelity Software or Vanguard or your financial advisor, make sure that you're getting a detailed retirement income plan before you step into retirement. So let's remember that number, 900, we'll just round it up. Let's say 923,000. So let's go back to assets and let's add in $923,000. So let's add in, first of all, let's put some bank money on here. So let's say we've got money in the bank and let's make that our 23,000. And then let's add in an IRA so that's an IRA and it's a traditional IRA and let's, that's money's in the market. It's at risk, meaning it can go up and down and that's gonna be 900,000. So that gives us an, our $923,000 at 60. So let's go back to our rate of returns. Let's add in a 6% rate of return, not on the bank, obviously that's not gonna be a 6%. 6% on our IRA, our bank's gonna be at zero. Now obviously interest rates can change, but let's just say at zero for the money that's in the bank. So now we know we've got a portfolio weighted average of 5.85% because the money in the bank's not earning anything. The 900,000 is earning six. So we've got a portfolio weighted average of 5.85. So let's go back to retirement to see how we did. Look at this, at 99 years old, we've got zero dollars. So we did pretty good. We actually need about $43,000 more. That's because we've got 23,000 sitting in the bank earning zero. If we were getting a straight 6% on the 923, we would have made it. So now we need to go back. I asked the client, hey, is 99 at zero? Do you feel good about that? A lot of times people will say, yeah, I feel pretty good. But let's go back to add in some of the extra money we want to spend. So, hey, at 60, I want to travel for 10 years. So let's do some travel. I want to do this. I'm going to take an annual distribution. Let's do a $15,000 vacation. And let's do this for 10 years. Now, obviously, this can change. So that's why we want to have a flexible plan. But let's do this for 10 years. And yeah, there needs to be inflation on it because Inflation is going to be everywhere on airplanes and on hotels and on food. So we need to do that. And we need to take this money out of our retirement savings, which is out of our IRA. And we need to do travel, have fun. So let's save and close that. So we just added in a $15,000 travel outflow for 10 years. So let's go back to our retirement plan to see what that does. Look at that. It cut off a decade of our retirement savings. Look at this. We are out of money at 88 years old. We're at zero. Now we have social security kicking on at 67 still. That's the 2,800. Here's our $15,000 for travel and notice how it does have inflation. So at 70, it's actually $20,000 because of inflation on that money. Now I could have kept it at $15,000 and instead of going to Italy, I could go to you know, uh, I don't know, California or something, who knows? I just wanted to see, hey, if I wanna spend $15,000 a year on travel, I don't know where my grandkids are gonna be. I wanna go see them. If they're in Juneau, Alaska, or Bangor, Maine, or if they're in South Korea, I wanna go see them. So I wanna make sure I have this added into my retirement plan. So at 88, I'm at zero. Now we come back up here, and we notice, okay, if we wanna do this kind of travel, we need $253,000 more in retirement savings, or we need to average a higher rate of return, 7.56. So in this case, I would say if someone was close to retirement and they had $923,000 saved, I'd say, hey, listen, we need to adjust something. Maybe we drop the travel and we, and we don't spend as much. So let's go back to that real quick. Let's go to travel. And let's just adjust it. So let's take it down to $10,000 a year. That's a pretty good trip, right? $10,000 a year. And we go to retirement. 
And look, we've got to 91. So we're increasing our retirement expenses by lowering our travel budget. And we've lowered how much we need saved for retirement. So it might be another question where I ask somebody, hey, if you want to do this travel, maybe you need to pick up a part-time job. If you want to retire at 60 from your full-time work, maybe you pick up a part-time job. And they go, you know what, Drew, that's a great idea. How about we add in an extra $20,000 for working at the Home Depot. I said, okay, so let's add that in. Let's go to cash flow. Let's go to part-time work. We're gonna say we're gonna work at the Home Depot because who doesn't wanna work in the hardware store? I would. And let's do $20,000 a year. And where's my calculator at? $20,000 a year. So let's do this on a monthly basis because that's how we normally get paid every two weeks. So 20,000 divided by 12. That's $1,600 a month. And we're not gonna make any kind of adjustments to that. And let's do that for the same decade that we wanna travel, because we're gonna use this part-time work to help us travel, okay? This is coming from a taxable external source. So this money is taxed. That $1,600 is the gross value. There's gonna be taxes on that. And that's gonna be to pay expenses. So this is gonna help us pay our expenses so we can use our retirement investing accounts to travel. So we're gonna save and close. We go back to retirement and boom, at 100, we have $36,751. So there's a way that we've solved an issue that the client was looking for. So obviously this is different from your scenario. Obviously you have different cash flows, different things you wanna do, different asset values. But we have to look at what makes the most sense to help you get to retirement through retirement and protect your ability to stay in retirement. Now, the last thing we want to look at are taxes. For this individual, their taxes, remember they're in the state of Florida. I don't think I said that. So this person's in Florida, so there's no state tax. Now, for the year 2024, and I want to go two years, all of our money's in IRA. So everything pulling out is ordinary income. So for them, their gross income is $67,400. There's the standard deduction of $12,950. Our taxable income is $54,450. $41,000 is the base. We're at $4,808 over base. And then we've got some extra taxes. So our federal tax is $7,596, which puts them in the 22% bracket. Now, the federal effective rate is 11.27. So he's in the bracket of the 22%, but after the standard deduction, and really, depending on other expenses and things like that, he's in the 11.27 effective tax rate, which is really good. Now, what we might look at for this individual as they get closer to 60 is doing some Roth conversions, things like that to help them lower the taxes even more, okay? So, We've looked at cash flows. We've looked at market returns at 6%. Let's go to actually looking at sequence of return risk. So if we go to the market now, so over on the left-hand side, we've got our 6% rate of return. Okay, so our 923 are at 6%. Over on this side, this is market comparison. And I wanna use the year 2000 as our market comparison because the decade from 2000 to 2010 is the worst decade that I remember. I've been doing this 15 years. 2000 to 2010 was the worst decade. It was a negative three for the decade, okay? Now, 1990 to 2000 was like the best decade that I was alive for, okay? So let's look at the first decade, 2000 to 2010, because we had sequence of return risk twice. And what I mean by that is the market was negative for multiple years twice. So the first one was 2000, 2000, 2000, 2001, 2002. And the next one was 2000, 2000, 2007, 2008. Okay. So if you look at the market comparison, this person is actually out of money at 82 based on the decade 2000 to 2010. Now our scenario averaging 6%, they run out at a hundred. So we have to look at this and say, there's about a 20 year gap if we have some rough seas in the market. So you have to ask yourself, what's the risk I'm taking on my money? Because all of the money for this scenario is at risk of market loss. And so we have to do some investment scenarios. We've got to look at the portfolios. We need to look at how we're invested. And then we have to ask ourselves, do we want to lower our rate of return? And if we do that, we might have to do some other 
you know, put more part-time work, we might have to lower our travel. There might have to be some other adjustments to the plan if we lower our rate of return because we're worried about our risk. Again, there are so many variables that go into retirement planning, into the details. That's why you need an EKG. You need a financial EKG or a financial plan from some, your financial advisor, Fidelity Vanguard, somebody, call me, let's put this together for you. Actually, in the comment section below is a free download called the Checklist to Retirement. Download that, but that's how you get, a, get in touch with me. Select the box that, yes, I want to visit you with you. And we can put this together because we need to look at all the different variables. You might be saying, Drew, I don't need to look at all these different variables. I don't need to think about all this. When you get on an airplane, aren't you glad that your pilot goes through his checklist every single time he gets on the plane? Not only does he examine the plane from the outside, but he gets in the cockpit and he pushes all the right buttons. He selects all the right boxes to make sure that your plane's gonna get from Phoenix, Arizona to New York, New York. Aren't you glad that he looks at every single variable every time he gets on the plane? And that's exactly what we do with our clients. We look at every single variable every time we get into the plan. So we've looked at the market, we've looked at taxes, we've looked at cash flow, we've looked at assets. Let's go back to income one more time because I wanna show you really two more things. The first thing is I wanna lower social security. Let's instead of taking it at 67, let's take it at 62. So if we take Social Security at 62, it would be $1,960. That's 70% of the full retirement benefit. So let's save that. Now let's look at what that does to the retirement plan. Remember, taking it at 67, with the travel, with the part-time work, we get to 100. We got $36,000. Look at this. If we take it earlier, we get to 100 and we've got $34,000 left over. So it's a $2,000 difference in our retirement assets to take Social Security a little earlier. So again, it comes down to personal preference. And it comes down to two with Social Security. Is this person married? Is there another partner? What's going on? And so Social Security is, again, not just a singular decision. It's a multifaceted decision based on everything else. So we're going to take Social Security early. And I want to adjust the assets just for a second. Let's do a lower rate of return. Let's take this down to 4%. So we're going to take it down to 4% rate of return on our money in the market, and we're going to take Social Security a little earlier. Now we're out at 88. So let's go back to income real quick. Let's jump Social Security back to 2800. Now let's go back to retirement, still at 88. So if you are more risk averse, if you want to look at a lower rate of return throughout your retirement, then we have to look at how we're invested. We've got to look at other options. So there are so many variables when it comes to your retirement plan. So make sure that you are looking at all those variables and you need a financial EKG. Hey, thank you so much for watching. God bless. Bye-bye.